Good evening. On behalf of the principal and the faculty of Department of Commerce, Kaide Millat Government College for Women, I extend a very warm greetings to all the participants who have joined this online faculty development program. As you all know, the world of commerce is ever changing. And as faculty, it is imperative that we incorporate these dynamics in our syllabus. It is with this background in our mind, we have conceptualized this session. I assure the participants that you'll have key take takeaways from this session. With this assurance, I hand over the session to Mrs. Maharasi, Associate Professor and Head Department of Commerce. Thank you, Dr. Smriti. A very good evening to all of you. At the outset, I extend my greetings and gratitude to our principal, Dr. Frida Nyanarani, ma'am. I take great pleasure in inviting our eminent guest, Dr. Gobalakrishna Raju, a practicing chartered accountant and a prolific speaker. We are indeed very fortunate to have a scholarly guest for today's session to address the faculty on curriculum development. I express my heartfelt gratitude for your readiness in accepting our invite and look forward to your valuable in inputs. Welcome you, sir. I extend a warm welcome to the heads and faculty of various disciplines of our institution who have joined the session to support us in this venture. I also extend a hearty welcome to the enthusiastic academic fraternity who are participating in this live streaming event from all across our country. We appreciate your keen interest and assure you that this session will give you vital inputs to move forward. As India moves progressively towards becoming global knowledge economy, it must meet the rising aspirations of the youth. This can be achieved only through designing a competitive curriculum with a renewed focus on advancement of skills. To remember the quotes of Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. We, the teachers, are the change makers. Our speaker, with his vast experience, will be sharing his thoughts on contemporary issues in the field of commerce to enable the teachers to be change makers. Once again, I welcome all of you for this session and call upon Dr. Rajalakshmi, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to introduce the learned guests to the August audience. Thank you. Thank you, Magarasi ma'am. A very good evening to all who are united with us in this digital platform. Now I am honored to take this opportunity to introduce our chief guest of the day. He is none other than CA Gopal Krishna Raju, who is not only a renowned chartered accountant, also a well-known academic counselor and advisor for the Department of Commerce, Kaida Millat Government College for Women. This gentleman hardly requires any introduction. He is well known for his academic and professional contribution in the field of accountancy. CA Gopalakrishna Raju, who is popularly addressed as GKR, is a practicing chartered accountant and a registered insolvency professional in Chennai. GKR is a direct and indirect tax partner of Mrs. K. Gopal Rao and Co. Chartered Accountants. Interestingly, this highly reputed chartered accountant hails from a family of chartered accountants. The prefix added to his name, CA, not only confers him the title Chartered Accountant, also exhibits his charismatic amalgamation of his experience in accounting field. As member of SARC of ICAI, he got elected for the consecutive three terms of nine years from 2010 to 2019 as the Southern India Regional Council of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. To add a feather to his cap at present, he is the chairman of Indirect Taxes Committee of SIRC of I ICAI. Recently, SAR is awarded with the honorary doctorate in governance of GST in government sector by St. Mother Teresa University, Melbourne, Australia, and qualified for online proficiency self-assessment test with distinction conducted by Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs of Government of India. And he is in the Independent Directors Data Bank. His achievements runs to pages, considering the time constraint. Let me highlight some of his achievements to edify the participants. 
yeah he is qualified in valuation examination of insolvency and bankruptcy board of india and limited insolvency examination of insolvency and bankruptcy board of india he is associate member of the institute of cost accountants of india with all india rank in intermediate examination and he is also the associate member of the institute of company secretaries of india a speaker is a twin post graduate diploma holder in operation research and in financial management from pandicherry university and he pursued his mphil in management he is a qualified information systems auditor from the institute of chartered accountants of india and qualified part 1 of post qualification course in international trade laws and world trade organization from icai adding to his credit he holds eight nsc certification in financial markets from national stock exchange of india limited that is capital market dealers derivative market dealers securities market basic fi mmda nsc debt market basic modules commodity market am fi mutual funds basic am fi mutual funds advices and corporate governance modules this eminent chartered accountant has published the books with the title standard costing and variance analysis for professional students and first lessons in information technology for ca students ca gopalakrishna raju is a seasoned speaker on information technology finance and taxation and the visiting faculty for numerous institutions corporates and b schools gkr is a member of bombay chartered accountant society and madras management association and life member of the society of auditors and chartered accountant study circle in addition to these affiliations he is an active rotarian to be inspired is great but to be an inspiration is an honor in addition to the words spoken about him hitherto he plays a multifaceted roles in the expanse of his profession as valuation standards board member registered valuation foundation academic council member dg vaishnav college chennai academic advisory board member stnb vaishnav college for women chennai and laila college chennai academic board member sivt college chennai board of studies member for new college chennai and guru nanak college chennai audit advisory board member director director general of audit chennai executive committee member center for entrepreneurial development anna university chennai member of expert committee on corporate allied law csr governance and ethics of hindustan chamber of commerce steering committee member of institute of directors chennai besides he is a published and widely read author of the current era a passionate writer on technology and taxation in numerous journals and newspapers columnist in tamil daily the hindu tamil and weekly tamil magazines nanayam vigadan and pudhiya thalaimurai kalvi many of us have been continuously watching his program on tamil tv channels and fm radios including dd podigai jaya tv news 18 tamil nadu kaveri news fm rainbow these proclaimed words about him not only as a widespread acclaim but also the international recognition sir at this juncture let me quote that every thought you produce anything you say any action you do it bears your signature as a versatile speaker gkr have addressed more than 300 meetings on gst to various forums including professional bodies chamber of commerce industry and trade association in both english and tamil we are honored by your presence on this occasion sir kaide millat government college for women department of commerce takes pride to have this eminent personality for today's fpp program to lay down the prerequisites to frame the syllabus which will serve as a bridge between the commerce fraternity and the corporate sector to walk along without any impediment especially this period thank you sir thank you madam participants we are so excited to have you all join with us for this program i request you to post your queries of the session in the chat box to be moderated by dr r suchita assistant professor of commerce thank you on behalf of the principal hod the staff the students of kaide millat government college for women and all participants i request the distinguished chief guest ca gopala krishna raju to address this online gathering now over to a resource person ca gopala krishna raju welcome sir thank you madam at the outset uh, let me thank uh, the kaide millat uh, college for women especially uh, dr d freda principal of this college and uh, associate professor and uh, 
head of the department uh, uh, dr m maharasi and uh, dr m r uh, rajalakshmi and uh, dr sucharita and dr uh, sumati ravi and uh, host of uh, faculty members across uh, southern region and also many faculty members from across the country have joined this particular uh, program my uh, wishes uh, and uh, appreciation to each and every one of you for joining this particular program now before uh, i venture into this particular topic uh, just uh, give me a minute time to share my screen so that uh, i'll be in a position to actually uh, take you to the particular subject directly good today's topic is uh, a very very special topic topic is uh, designing a competitive curriculum in commerce a front end approach a very unique uh, topic and i must appreciate uh, all the faculty members for choosing a topic of this uh, kind especially this is the topic of the future and many of the faculty members um, especially from the commerce background uh, they always have one point uh, in their mind whether the curriculum presently which is being taught to the children is uh, up to the date and up to the mark and whether it will be suitable for the market that is the idea at which uh, every curriculum is designed and if this question mark is there in mind maybe a uh, fdp program of this kind uh, will definitely throw light uh, on designing the competitive curriculum because today's uh, qualification what the institutions uh, they inculcate us the knowledge and uh, at the end of the session there is a testing process and a certificate is given now whether uh, this actually enhances uh, what do you call it as the quality the knowledge quality of the student so that he is actually he or she will be a, a fit person fit and a proper person for the industry so this is the backdrop at which this theme has been designed and very nicely they have uh, taken one approach called as front end approach so we'll actually be uh, going through this particular uh, aspect uh, slowly let me uh, take you through what do you mean by a front end approach front end approach uh, means uh, that means there is uh, another approach called uh, maybe back end approach uh, otherwise called uh, uh, what do you call it as uh, your traditional approach what is your traditional approach uh, there are five chapters i will uh, teach the five chapters deliberate the chapters explain the chapters and this is what the curriculum is this is what the chapters are understand i will illustrate and i will give a test questions you have to answer this is called the traditional approach other is called push approach other is called push approach the front end approach is a pull approach actually where the question is asked by the candidate why generally children will ask very small small kids are the one year two year three year single uh, digit kids will ask uh, uh, why uh, uh, the what is this uh, the two wheeler when it runs it doesn't fall but when the two wheeler is actually static it will fall down so how is it uh, the children will ask how is it the two wheeler is able to go when it is running it is not falling down this is called front end approach and uh, the best uh, uh, teacher to learn front end approaches is one year i mean uh, the single digit kids they will actually ask inquisitive questions why is it happening like this why is it and without anything uh, inside their mind uh, very nadan say what do you call it as a uh, very with uh, very clarity in their thought uh, they will have the question mark there will be clarity in their thought that is why that question is coming why it is happening like this so they need a uh, yeah a clarity with respect to that particular doubt so that is what is called as a front end approach and 
can we design a competitive curriculum in commerce with a front end approach and guys i will be actually focusing on this three phase approach what is the purpose maybe uh, we need to actually understand uh, and have a description of uh, what uh, type of uh, topics and subjects uh, we need to actually have a front end approach and then program and evaluation our uh, theme of this particular topic will be only on this because these are all the areas not included in our syllabus i repeat guys these are not included in our syllabus at all so therefore okay should uh, good it is not included in our syllabus but uh, where but these are the industry requirements uh, especially indian accounting standards gst process automation data analytics social media influencers uh, sustainable development goals and these are all the topics actually i'll uh, take you through slowly maybe the first topic is sustainable development goals and for each and every topic i am going to give the link with respect to uh, the various uh, courses that is available now what is sustainable development goals let me complete it maybe 10 to 15 minutes i will take each and every topic and uh, every topic uh, is a subject as such and maybe uh, if required this should form part of the curriculum this should form part of the curriculum especially at, for the finance or management uh, uh, syllabus either it is a bcom or mcom or mba or whether it is a masters in commerce or mba finance this should be actually a separate subject or maybe a certificate course should be given certificate course in gst certificate course in ndis certificate course in sustainable development goals and i want to tell you the sustainable development goal uh, sustainable development goal academy sdg academy this is actually an online education platform of the sustainable development solutions network this is a global initiative of united nations this is a massive online uh, course to learn about the 17 sustainable development goals and it is self paced the course is there instructor paced the course is there if you click this you can actually directly go to that particular academy this is that uh, particular academy sdg academy you can directly go there if you click this maybe uh, when time permits you can uh, go slowly and find out uh, what these courses are and majority of this courses are free of cost there is no cost for this they want you to actually come and learn online good now what is sustainable development goals and who developed it and uh, why it is so important and i want to make one point very clear to all of you the institute of chartered accountants of india has uh, recently this particular year 2020 has formed a sustainable reporting standards committee sustainable reporting standards committee they have formed and sustainable reporting will become the order of the day why not final non financial reporting alone is very important guys now i just want to share with you some of the most powerful socially responsible ceos they are all socially responsible and i am sure all of you know about these gentlemen who have also recently contributed crores of rupees not hundreds of crores thousands of crores ratan tata group ratan tata ji has contributed 1500 crore for uh, covid uh, uh, rehabilitation program and each and every gentleman please look at what narayan murthy uh, has said about uh, not the company but about the people who work in the company our assets our assets are employees they walk out of the door each evening and we have to make sure that they come back the next morning see look at the look at the statement and the employees are the assets of the company because they are the intellectual uh, people for that company and each and every uh, ceo in this uh, 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 photographs they are not only the best ceos maybe financially contributing to the economy the increasing the top line bottom line keeping the shareholders happy that is one aspect the other aspect they also make the they are also socially responsible keep uh, they are conscious towards uh, social development and also environment friendly now i just want to share with you all these things started way back in 1981 and it uh, was developed into a concept called triple bottom line in 
through these two books. Uh, there is a name of the book called Social Audit, a management tool called Corporate Working, another book called Cannibals, which for the triple bottom line of 21st century business. Now, I want to share it with you that slowly in 2009, the Prince of Wales, he actually formed a, a committee called as Prince Accounting for Sustainability Report, International Federation of Accountants. And why I am giving all this uh, backdrop is there is already in 2011, International Integrated Reporting Council has come out with the Global Reporting Initiative Standards, GRA standards. And already four standards are there and you can download these standards. It is in PDF format. You can download and see. GRA 100 is a universal standard. GRA 200 is an economic uh, related standard that is with respect to the profit. That is what is called 3P. One P is profit. Another P is people. Third P is planet. So economic is profit. Environment is planet. And social is people. So we have three separate, four separate standards already been brought out. And... Uh, what about in India? Please look at this. 2011 MCA has brought out voluntary guidelines and that has now become mandated through, I repeat, through publication of annual business responsibility report. It started in 2012 for only 100 listed companies. It went up to 500 listed companies in 2016. And remember, guys, before COVID-19, before COVID-19, in 2019 November, there was an announcement uh, and in SEBI, they gave the notification on 26th of uh, December 2019 that 1000 companies in India, listed companies, they have to mandatorily report a uh, business responsibility report. What they will report? They will report about environment, what are damages they have done and what are all the rejuvenation they have done in a format which is prescribed by SEBI in this particular notification. Please click and see. This is called uh, the Nava, Nava Rasam, the Nava Rasam of uh, business conduct, responsible business conduct. Please look at this Nava Rasam, sir. Ethics, transparency, accountability, safe and sustainable goods and services, well being of the employees. Are you employing children below 14 years? Are you giving safety to the employees whether prevention of sexual harassment act is in place who is the responsible officer the respect interest and responsive to the stakeholders how do you respect and promote human rights environment protection what and all you have done there are q and a format is given as far as presently present for that you need to collect a lot of uh, data and guys uh, this is uh, today mandated for thousand companies and uh, the numbers are growing. Please look at the way the numbers have grown from 2012 to 2019. In a span of seven years, 10 times of the companies they have covered and the time is uh, very, very short. Huh? They will cover all the listed companies. See, and you know how many listed companies are there in our company? Only 5,000. They have already covered 20%. So the balance uh, listed companies, they will cover maybe next year. Number two. Number three. Then the, they will come to the unlisted companies with the minimum turnover. Slowly they will, they are actually drilling down, drilling down to all companies, all companies with respect to mandatory reporting of, mandatory reporting of environmental and I repeat uh, the social. Already 2% of the profits, uh, if the profits exceeds 5 crore rupees, even a private limited company has to mandatorily spend 2%. The 2% they have now increased from minimum 2% to maximum 5%. So slowly they are actually uh, uh, focusing towards uh, social as well as environmental. And uh, that has been implemented and mandated in the law also. And these things uh, have to be brought out in the curriculum. Have to be brought out in the curriculum. We need to tell the students. See, it is not only profits. Even though the company is profit making. Company is profit making a construction company. How construction company will make profit? Construction company has to take a JCB, go to the riverbed, take the sand. Even for Mother Earth, Mother Earth, it will take 17 years for the river, for the river to actually break the rock into pieces, into pieces, into pieces, into pieces, into fine granules sand. 17 years it takes. 
and within seconds one jcb will take the entire sand how much of damage uh, the construction industry is giving to the environment so are we measuring it are we reporting it no now only slowly corporate social responsibility in spending was mandated 4 years back this year the corporate social responsibility spending has to be audited and it has to be verified whether the spending has been done as per the mandate of the csr committee and who has to do it the chartered accountant or the company secretary and the notification is yet to come it has already been framed so slowly these things have been uh, happening and uh, our uh, syllabus i repeat guys our syllabus is uh, actually uh, uh, by the time our syllabus gets uh, updated we will actually go uh, what do you call it as uh, we have a lot of constraints what do you, what are the constraints hours are very less uh, teachers are not there we need to learn this what is the textbook available and that is the time we are coming out with the answer called the front end approach and uh, guys please look at this in our country there is a law which was framed in 19th of july 2016 it is called the ugc credit framework for online learning courses through swayam and look at this uh, two link which i have given please click this link and see and uh, this particular uh, swayam they come out with 1600 plus courses 1600 plus courses and uh, many of the courses are credit courses meaning the moment you complete those courses credit will be given is with respect to the curriculum with respect to any particular subject or any particular unit the balance units or the balance subject only has to be learned so that is a kind of uh, regulation this is a regulation this is a law i repeat guys this is a law but the unfortunate thing is the unfortunate thing is 40 lakh almost 39 lakh learners learners they have enrolled only 60000 people have cleared this course that means only 1.5% pass percentage 1.5% have only passed meaning people are not uh, very much uh, into in actually completing this particular course now there are so many uh, courses uh, online courses which will actually be available to actually enhance uh, the knowledge level what you call it as the front end approach level and with respect to sustainable development goals you have one particular online education platform this is one platform which uh, can be now there are 17 sustainable goals guys and in each sustainable goals for example good health and well being how you actually take care of yourself and your employees quality education how you can go there is a separate mooc what is mooc massive op open online course for all the 17 i repeat 17 goals there are 17 courses are there 17 courses and these 17 courses are self paced course what is self paced course you can uh, learn at your free time at your free time an instructor paced means the instructor will come online and he will actually do the course now this is actually an online course what we are actually doing is an online one good now uh, guys uh, this is with respect to sdg and uh, uh, let me now uh, share with you uh, what is uh, the compliance that has been done in india compliance that has been done in india i want to just share with you only one aspect that there is an sdg india index uh, which has been developed by uh, niti ayog niti ayog and uh, this is the sdg india index uh, which actually uh, rates uh, the entire country all the entire country states union territory with respect to the 17 goals with respect to 17 goals transforming our world 2030 agenda okay now which state is actually first here kerala second rank is himachal pradesh third rank goes to andhra pradesh fourth is only coming to in tamil nadu fourth rank is only to tamil nadu guys then comes to telangana and what is the score out of 170 pointers they have got it because kerala is almost a very small state and of course uh, 100% we can say more green is there more green is there maybe not 100% but almost it is a green state so maybe that is uh, one thing which actually uh, pulls uh, them to actually uh, move towards uh, the top line in achieving all this for example kerala is a 100% literacy state so that is why this quality education uh, they are able to bring in then uh, 
gender equality, no poverty, zero hunger, clean water and sanitation. Anywhere are we seeing anything related to uh, finance? No. But guys, this is the time we need to actually tell our students very clearly. Very clearly we need to tell them that uh, it is not only making profit. It is also you need to make profit. Parallelly take care of the environment. Parallelly take care of the social uh, requirements also. So, and I'm sure this is the one of the objective uh, in with respect to this uh, uh, six points that have been identified by uh, the Kaidamilit uh, Government College for Women. And I'm sure uh, I have given one point very clearly with respect to SDG. So now come to the second point that is uh, with respect to Indian accounting standards. And I must uh, make this point. This is one link where if you click, you can find out uh, what is the list of the accounting standards. And uh, these are all the accounting standards uh, as of today, which has been notified by uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So one, two, three. And uh, maybe discussing this itself will take minimum six months time. But I'll tell you the significance of this. And uh, I must uh, place on record, place on record here that uh, uh, in the curriculum of uh, UG or PG, having a accounting standard as a separate subject, as a separate subject will actually give lot of confidence to the students because today when they go to a corporate environment, this is what the standard prescribes. At least uh, if they are not thorough in the 41 standards because MC has notified 41 standards. And if you look at these numbers, the, the three digit number is there, two digit standard number is there. And uh, there is a difference between these two. This is generation, latest generation standards. This is the immediate previous generation standards. When you read the standard itself, you will understand. OK, it is a three digit standard and it is a two digit standard. For example, the way the standard is presented itself. For example, three digit standard appendix A will be the definition. But in a two digit standard like accounting for government grants, India is 20. Their definition will form part of the standard itself. And you know, we need to know one very important thing in the Indian accounting standard is that the Fair value accounting has been brought in. Fair value accounting. What is fair value accounting? Maybe if I give you a simple example, these are the things we need to actually tell our students. Huh? And uh, uh, most important, most important, how we need to uh, ensure that uh, this will form part of the curriculum. Maybe one thing is I am part of uh, uh, at least a half a dozen uh, institution in Chennai and in Tamil Nadu where I form part of the academic council. And I make it a point wherever because even the institution, they have their own constraints because uh, they need to have a mandatory subjects. Uh, they need to have the mandatory uh, sub chapters also. So uh, removing one chapter and bringing one chapter, there are a lot of constraints are there. Number one constraint, uh, for example, we recently we introduced one subject itself in one um, what you call autonomous uh, institution. There was a lot of um, what do you call it as uh, 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 a very uh, difficult scenario with respect to convincing the entire uh, academic council with respect to that new uh, uh, subject. This is actually a subject called digital accounting and assurance. Digital accounting and assurance was a subject. We took it very uh, uh, boldly that the entire subject has to be brought in. So and there were uh, almost uh, a dozen questions uh, which was an impediment in implementing that particular uh, subject itself. Because, of course, they were an uh, autonomous uh, body. They were very keen. And since uh, the minority of the people were very keen in actually uh, doing some goodness to the students, uh, all the 12 questions uh, we answered uh, very uh, nicely, subtly, and to the learned uh, uh, group of uh, audience, uh, we, we gave the explanation why the subject has to come, what is the need, what is the industry relevance, what is the uh, present uh, curriculum it has. Uh, what the curriculum it doesn't have, what is the important thing it doesn't have, what is the significance of this new curriculum. Similarly, Indian accounting standards, I used to actually recommend uh, every time, please include it. And uh, there are uh, uh, areas where we get a uh, suggestion that it is very difficult to have the entire accounting standard because it is 41 standards. And uh, what is the only solution? I said the 41 need not be done, one or two. For example, most important thing, I can call it as India 16. What is India 16? Property, plant, and equipment, especially with respect to depreciation. And uh, 
maybe a uh, one or two uh, new standards also you can bring it like for example agriculture or uh, intangible assets maybe these are all some of the new standards you can actually give an introduction and uh, today there are um, companies who do agriculture corporate agriculture which call what we call it as producer companies and uh, what if uh, producer companies especially tata coffee limited it is a producer company and they have coffee trees coffee plants uh, tea bushes uh, and how tea bushes will be accounted in books of accounts uh, because that is a closing stock will it be brought in fixed asset or it will be brought in closing stock it will be brought in fixed assets now if it is brought in fixed assets will it be accounted in uh, historical cost no it will be valued at fair value as on the 31st december at 31st march now what is it so that is the place where we need to actually we need to actually ask the student please go and uh, tell me what is the value of this tree it will be very difficult for him to actually comprehend it because traditionally we have not uh, been taught that so that is why this approach uh, uh, and india is as of today india is as of today in swayam they have not brought out a separate uh, curriculum but i suggest uh, a front end approach now what is a front end approach uh, you can have a, a push technology otherwise the traditional approach of offering offering a certificate course in ndas that is number one second uh, integrating ndas mandatorily as the sixth unit uh, as a sixth unit in every curriculum because if you are a, what do you call it as a, a autonomous body maybe if you are not an autonomous body we need to actually have this as a parallel curriculum like a front end approach in swayam there is a necessity to have a certificate course in ndas now why they are not bringing it the need need because the need has to be brought in and uh, this is the place where the government colleges the teachers of government colleges can come together can come together frame the syllabus and with the help of uh, professional fraternity they can actually launch uh, the certificate course in india as as an online course as a front end approach thereby that can be a parallel program so they will be reading the accountancy subject they will be reading the commerce management subject and the india as also not necessary all the 41 standards i repeat guys not necessary all the 41 standards at least uh, the most important standards like for example what is the most important standard leases 116 leases statement of cash flows inventories accounting policies property plant and equipment government grant many people they don't know accounting for government grant and i will tell you one interesting example there is a government has allotted a land for 1 rupee for 1 rupee one acre land was given and it was actually uh, given for education institution or it could have been given for an industry okay just for the development purpose they would have given now if the land has been given in the balance sheet will i put it as 1 1 rupee there are two suggestion that is given in accounting for government grants accounting for government one suggestion is account the land at fair value what is fair value the current cost what is the current cost of that land measure it and then book it in the books of account this is the worth of land uh, government has given to me you must show that in your balance sheet and you show in your uh, liability side this is the amount of reserves uh, which is unearned on this particular land because it has been given by government grant we have to say government grant the grant you have you have to show it as a separate item in your liability side government has given a grant to that extent the land is there now that grant is in what form in the land form so we need to actually explain this and uh, maybe some important uh, standards we need to actually identify and uh, bring it as part of the curriculum and maybe you have other uh, uh, items like borrowing cost uh, which is applicable for both for corporate as well as for non corporate so out of this 41 standards guys at least uh, a dozen standards 12 standards 12 standards a 12 week program like that you can design it and then bring so they say uh, something is better than nothing they say something is better than nothing rather than the student uh, saying that uh, oh ho oh, india is spelling itself i don't know then how can we expect it because today financial reporting has become uh, the order of the day and uh, indian accounting standard has become the standard with respect to the financial reporting so therefore knowledge of india is will actually enhance the candidates worth uh, so number one with respect to sdg we have a separate course given by the free course given by un second indian accounting standard 
where courses have to be customized courses have to be customized presently there are courses which has been offered uh, those are very very costly course very costly course uh, maybe in uh, uh, more than tens of thousands tens of thousands uh, tens of 10000s uh. so therefore we have to bring that uh, cost to very very meager minimum and the institutions should also come forward in subsidizing this and making the indian accounting standards as part of the curriculum making the students maybe 100 students out of 140 50 they are able to uh, uh, get themselves uh, comfortable with this uh, standard i am sure that itself is a very big uh, very very big uh, achievement very big achievement good okay right now next uh, topic is uh, let me go to next topic that is process automation process automation and uh, uh, we have uh, data analytics both will go together and there is one more uh, uh, point which uh, have to be done madam uh, sucharita have to actually introduce this particular topic maybe uh, we can request madam sucharita to actually uh, do that at the end maybe as a what is the topic actually i actually explained it you can do that at the end good now let me come to the process automation i want to uh, give a simple these are all some of the topics uh, which is uh, there certificate course which has been announced uh, maybe you can see this here this is one course which is announced by swayam it is called course in financial markets and emerging business model what is the next course uh, please look at this this is a course uh, introduced by swayam called mathematical finance that is the second one look at the third one this is a course uh, introduced uh, to give a certificate in financial modeling please look at this now who has introduced this particular course all india association of international wealth management of india they are actually giving this particular course it is called certificate in financial modeling and all these courses are that are process automation now what is process automation these are the three now very simple let me put 10 or 20 years back uh, we used to have manual accounting the ledger uh, everything right from journal ledger trial balance everything is was manual now today manual accounting was considered a, is considered as a taboo and uh, it should be only a computerized accounting now why it is uh, automated automation will be done in every place where there is a repeated and routine activity okay take the chalan then uh, uh, put debit and what is credit uh, amount this and give narration good this is repeated activities punch it it will be posted punch it it will go to uh, the respective trial balance again punch it it will be posted to the financial statement punch it to get the print out the repeated activities now you automate it you increase productivity now where and all you can automate wherever the repeated and automa routine activities that you can automate number one filing of returns number two calculation of the uh, tax uh, liability number three okay uh, for example converting the data what you have into the software into the software that is called keying of data now, how do you do it uh, if you have the data in one particular format uh, you can convert that to the format in which you want so you can automate it or if you have the data in a manual form or in some format you have to scan it and then it has to uh, take it to the machine so how do you do it every step you can automate it so today they say i have a um, office in various parts of the state uh, and i have uh, my business uh, data i have to bring it to one particular place and then i need to do the accounting not required today accounting can be done at any particular point of place and it can be collated so process automation with respect to commerce with respect to finances first is identifying the repeated and routine activities now if you identify this repeated and routine activities itself uh, 50% of the job is over 50% of the job is over and uh, we need to actually uh, uh, do two types of study one is to understand how automation has to be done this is the second and third step actually the second and third step is uh, okay if you want to increase the productivity 
you have to automate it by automating it the time is reduced thereby productivity increased and how do you do automation by modeling how do you do it by modeling and you you have to read that modeling aspects especially wherever calculation computation data capture data transfer okay all this is automation so today the domain experts what do you call it as a commerce uh, experts uh, the uh, graduates uh, and the post graduates they are the guys who actually work in the uh, what do you call the ground level they know what is a routine activity and uh, these are the guys uh, you need to actually tell them because they will come out with uh, to the top management to the next middle management sir these are all the 17 activities i am doing out of the 17 Twelve activities are repeated activities. We can automate it. Now there are pluses there, minuses there. What is a plus? Sir? Productivity will increase. What is a minus? Sir? Out of ten, uh, people will think. People will think. Uh, out of ten, only three will get the job. Seven will be kicked out. No, no. Three will do the job, but the seven they will not be kicked. They have to enhance their skill. By enhancing their skill, uh, they have to go to data analytics. Because once the data is captured. then next work is there what is next work please look at this lot of data analytics uh, um, what do you called as parallel courses what is this course swayam is offering one particular course data analytics with the python for that you need to learn python uh, maybe if you don't if you if you don't have a flair towards uh, what is it software you can go for predictive analytics this is an iim bangalore uh, professor uh, dinesh kumar he is actually give this particular course uh, one of the wonderful course i am i am i am telling you very good course uh, forecasting and sps exponential smoothing technique uh, and this is one of the very good course especially predictive analysis and uh, this is actually very good for forecasting uh, preparing cash flows uh, preparing for valuation also this uh, particular model will be very very useful and uh, next comes to the the last one so you have one more model this is called business analytics and data mining this is another course uh, which has been offered all this uh, will once you have the data once you do the process automation once you capture the data by doing the modeling capture the data what do you do with the data you need to actually analyze it you need to give reports uh, you need to give timely information so that the business strategies are are changed uh, today you need data you need information about your competitors what others are doing doing the same thing you may not stand in the post covid 19 scenario so bi tools please look at this bi tools business intelligence tools so today so many bi tools have come and uh, excel 2020 excel 2019 and excel 2020 has come with a lot of bi tools fundamental spreadsheet uh, package a fundamental spreadsheet package is now enhanced with the bi tools data analytics tools now what is this once you have huge data huge data what do you call it as lakhs and lakhs of uh, rows uh, and uh, maybe tens and tens of columns uh, how do you do the analysis how do you do the summary of the data how do you actually do a product wise uh, maybe a, a person wise uh, geography wise demography wise uh, you need to get lot of information and then you have to do the modeling you have to do the predictive analysis you have to do the projections also past present and future that is uh, business intelligence look at this business intelligence can be viewed as using business data to understand company's past present as well as future uh, why business analytics is only using data to look ahead into the future so business intelligence tools is bi tools that is called as bi tools so there are so many bi tools like uh, for example you take ms access inside ms access you have bi tools inside ms excel you have bi tools there are bi softwares also are there and there are tools which is created by software engineers so that is called bi sort tool creators but uh, those are uh, not required with respect to uh, the commerce uh, student but with respect to a commerce student he need to understand these three especially the last one so this is what uh, i showed you at what is business analytics and data mining modeling please look at this uh, course uh, content please look at this course content enrollment date and, and it is actually going on almost 4778 uh, people have already enrolled uh, and uh, please look at this predictive analysis 3511 uh, people have already enrolled for this course especially on data analytics and uh, this is all uh, happening 
and all these uh, courses are available available some of these courses are paid courses some of these courses are subsidized some of these courses are 100 percent 100 percent you get subsidy okay 100 percent you get subsidy based on your performance for example if you are a degree or your post graduation or you are a professional course you are an mba and you are a pass out with 80 percent and above distinction there are uh, concessions with respect to fees and 100 percent uh, you will get a subsidy with respect to uh, the fee which uh, they have been charging so all these uh, are the plus points with respect to data analytics uh, uh, courses doing it is as a front end approach parallelly offering and uh, my suggestion to all the fraternity we have uh, close to we have close to uh, 220 audiences across uh, this uh, uh, session and uh, my uh, request to all of them is all these sesh courses you need to actually introduce and uh, make the students uh, to parallelly uh, enroll for this course uh, and one more uh, suggestion to the uh, fraternity is first uh, among us, uh, we need to actually enroll for this particular course and we need to know what is happening. And I'll tell you guys, out of these courses, for example, this particular course uh, where you have almost 3,511 uh, people who have enrolled, uh, majority of them uh, are actually teachers. Majority of them are teachers who have enrolled for this particular course. And it's actually good when uh, we understand, as teachers, we understand what these courses are, we'll be in a better position to actually tell the student, yes, have to uh, take this particular course it will be very very useful for you good now coming to uh, the topic of social media influencers and uh, last but not the least i will take you to the gst part and which will take uh, the last five to ten minutes now what is social media influencers uh, i must make one point very clear guys uh, we have bloggers we have instagrammers we have facebookers we have linkediners we have youtubers we have tiktokers so all these are influences. And today, uh, I'll just share with you, uh, in India, we have uh, social media influences with over 5 lakh followers. 5 lakh followers. Uh, you know how much followers for uh, Amitabh Bachchan? For Amitabh Bachchan, you have 10 million followers. 10 million followers in Facebook. In Facebook, 10 million followers. So he is, uh, every post, 2,760 posts he has made in uh, Facebook. 2,760 posts uh, and uh, and maybe uh, his post is uh, mostly uh, with respect to uh, uh, what do you call media but some of his posts uh, are also having an influence with respect to uh, the thing which is happening in the society so and uh, the social media influencer can actually add value can actually add value can influence the people who are actually following now uh, people actually follow uh, what we call it as uh, the politicians the film stars okay and uh, other than politicians and film stars uh, there are uh, uh, what do you call the teachers influencers uh, uh, speakers who actually have uh, been followed and i wish every teacher today we have 200 plus uh, teachers who have been uh, been uh, faculties uh, professors uh, associate professors assistant professors principals who have been watching this i wish each and every one of you from today we must take a wow that uh, we must uh, need not be a mega influencer influencer but at least we should be a nano or a micro influencer please look at this if you are a nano influencer 5000 followers my facebook account is full 5000 full uh, my uh, linkedin uh, is almost 20000 plus uh, uh, members are there now member is different followers are different you need to have a channel in YouTube. You need to have uh, maybe uh, Instagram and how many people are following you in Instagram. Blogger, how many people are following in your blog because you need to write well. You need to put good content. Then only people will follow you. YouTubers, TikTokers. TikTokers, uh, people think it is only uh, doing some, uh, oh, what do you call it, entertainment stuff in TikTok is uh, actually uh, TikTok. No, you have to uh, use that medium. But of course, it is a... Uh, and there is another negative thing that is happening that uh, no, 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 please don't use Chinese uh, things and all. There are equivalent, uh, uh, you have the Desi product brand is there, use that. So that stuff we will not go. But the point here is what I want to uh, tell you here is social media influencers, uh, they can impact people. 
they are themselves are a brand social media influencer is a user on social media who can establish credibility in a specific industry he can be a musician okay he can be a painter or artist he can be a what do you call it as a motivational speaker or he can be an entertainer or he can be a, a social activist anybody or he can be a teacher or he can be a, what do you call it as a, a change maker a change maker or uh, he would have brought out a new concept because of that uh, there will be a lot of followers uh, and uh, there are social media overnight influencers because of one particular post uh, would, which would have become viral which would have become viral now those guys are very very important uh, with respect to education sector i repeat guy with respect to education sector because they have built a reputation for the knowledge and expertise and uh, especially every every uh, what do you call it as individual social media influencer need not be uh, an organizer no, need not be an organizer it be an individual and uh, point to be noted these individuals uh, they themselves are an institution they themselves are an institution because of the huge following because of the huge following so guys please understand uh, that people in education you have a uh, a uh, very great responsibility people who are in social activity people who are in social activity people who are environmental activities they have lot of uh, what you called uh, plus points in social media to influence people to guide the people who are following uh, them to advise them to uh, direct them to steer them to actually advise them to suggest them that uh, what is uh, right in the society educate them properly and uh, today uh, what reaches very fast what reaches very fast the tomorrow's newspaper news uh, is a uh, old news tomorrow's newspaper news is a uh, old news because you have already seen that in uh, social media why because of the influence and just imagine if uh, we convert that towards education and that is where the academicians should play a very important role academicians should play a very important role i don't say that you take a subject and do it you take a uh, what you called as a future subject for example one of you can take ndas one of you can take ndas and only post only on ndas and uh, the time will come and it is not overnight you can actually have a followers of 30000 1 lakh uh, 1 million followers no it is not possible and uh, i have to make one request to all of you guys i am also in youtube and maybe i am not an influencer i have only few hundred followers and maybe i have to request all of you when you actually uh, going out of this uh, session please uh, click uh, the subscribe button now that subscribe button is actually not paid upon it is actually your interest which you are showing uh, towards this channel yes this particular program was uh, Uh, to the mark uh, and uh, there was take away on this particular uh, topic and this is what the message uh, the influencers will be making on the viewers so please uh, note down when you are actually uh, moving out of the session don't forget to actually click the subscribe button good now last but not the least uh, i want to share with you uh, because we have come to 458 i the last one point and then i leave the uh, floor open for question answers because we have lot of uh, questions to be asked as yes, we have lot of questions uh, i think we have uh, so many questions are there we will uh, go for those questions and <clears throat> good gst maybe i'll take the last uh, few minutes sir uh. gst you have innumerable innumerable courses in swine guys innumerable courses and uh, i wish uh, today uh, every institution uh, they have understood uh, the need for it and they have introduced uh, gst as part of the curriculum so need for a front end approach uh, is only going in depth in gst that is why many institutions they have come forward in parallelly having a, a what do you call as employment oriented industry oriented certificate course in gst and apart from that also which they give in the in campus itself and off campus if you want to try you can try in swayam you can try in various uh, institutions 
they are been giving a certificate course on gst and my suggestion to the every institution uh, representative who are uh, uh, representing this 250 plus audience guys have a uh, exclusive certificate course in gst have an exclusive certificate course in gst and i will design that course if you wish to uh, have a uh, support with respect to designing the gst my, myself along with my team of uh, faculty members we have already implemented certificate course in gst in five of the institution in chennai itself chennai itself and we are on the process of implementing one more course called certificate course in data analytics certificate course in advanced ms excel all these our team is actually designing and uh, handing over to the respective uh, institution some of which uh, we did as a part of uh, what is called uh, in house program but post covid uh, in doing an in house program will be a thing of the past so therefore uh, doing an online program will be the most suitable one and the number also can be reached we can even network it is not only institutional based three four institution can come together can offer one uh, a time line based course to all the students of the four institutions uh, like that also it can be planned because previously campus based program means it will be only on the campus in that one particular place but once it is an off campus program it can even be multiple uh, institutions can integrate to uh, come out with these courses all this front end approach have to be actually thought uh, to be a fit approach and i am sure uh, uh, people will uh, agree uh, to this uh, thing and i must uh, thank each and every one of you uh, who have been part of this particular program and i'll be open for any questions sir uh, and maybe uh, let me uh, ask uh, uh, sumati madam or maharashi madam to uh, take the lead to uh, ask questions sir uh, so that one by one we can uh, Uh, take it up. So over to uh, Mahara Singer. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Can you please permit Dr. Sucharita? Sucharita. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. She will be moderating. Ah. Ah, uh, good evening, sir. thank you sir for the wonderful presentation it was a highly informative session and definitely an eye opener for us academicians in the framing of curriculum and the student community as well as to how they have to academically equip themselves thank you sir for giving us in simple terms the meaning of front end approach for uh, making us aware and the student fraternity aware aware of what are the various online courses available in swayam in financial ma markets and emerging business models in financial modeling touching upon aspects of sustainable uh, development goals and uh, business analytics and data mining and uh, the who are the uh, social media influencers and uh, how what aspects have to be taken into consideration in the designing of curriculum thank you so much sir we are now open to questions i request all the participants to kindly post their questions in the chat box sir we have a question from dr c shankar narayanan ah uh the problem with affiliated institutions is that the syllabus are revised once in 3 to 4 years in that case how to cope up with the latest demands of the industry uh, my suggestion is uh, once in 3 years is uh, too much uh, you must think of having a revision to the syllabus every year so therefore you will be aligned with the uh, industry requirement so that is the for example we say in indian institute of management indian institute of technology we say batch uh, 2010 batch 2017 why they call it as batch 2017 2019 2018 in the course 2018 batch and 2017 batch uh, the curriculum itself is different and uh, as uh, uh, we need to actually imbibe uh, those model so that uh, our institution is also at par with uh, giving those uh, kind of uh, education especially at least at ug level or pg level 
to the requirement of the industry we need to actually tune it up especially during the transition phase of gst because gst came in the year of 2017 july but uh, that was the time our students uh, were studying the erstwhile uh, law that was the period which was very pathetic period because the 17 18 students uh, who will come out uh, by the time they come out gst is already one year old uh, but they would not have studied gst because our syllabus was not in sync with the gst so that is the need at which uh, as the there is a change uh, our syllabus also should change accordingly so that is my view maybe there will be some impediment in it and that is a place where ugc is very very clear whenever there is an impediment we need to represent it properly and whenever that is not possible please ensure that uh, you go for the credit system what is credit system ministry of hrd is offering 1600 courses and let the students mandatorily go through that uh, courses and you give the credit accordingly in your uh, curriculum that way your uh, uh, students will be up to date so those are uh, sort certain things we need to actually think upon next question madam rather this question is from supraja bandraj rather focusing on digital marketing alone is the focus on social media optimization smo like integration of information on facebook and insta pages etc necessary in the curriculum uh, it is uh, one uh, good suggestion actually maybe uh, with respect to uh, optimization uh, definitely it has to be uh, considered as thought fit especially where optimization has to be done today it is uh, included as part of our it is embedded as part of your software itself whether you use youtube whether you use facebook uh, whether you use uh, google your gmail itself uh, it is actually been integrated as part of it for example you have just now uh, uh, booked a railway ticket or just now you have uh, browsed in google with respect to uh, from chennai to uh, mumbai one air ticket you have just browsed it uh, immediately after uh, half an hour or one hour later you will get minimum 3 or 4 mails uh, hey hey uh, you are uh, planning to go travel to mumbai these are all the stay options uh, these are all the location options uh, there will be mail who actually uh, gave that it is actually inbuilt system inside it so you are artificial intelligence uh, is another topic where we need to actually uh, inculcate uh, as part of a uh, finance and management for example in finance and management where and all artificial intelligence can be brought in for example with respect to uh, creditors uh, payments uh, with respect to collections from receivable with respect to the pattern of buyers pattern with respect to the various uh, Uh, patterns of the suppliers uh, what is the pattern of the suppliers these are all the artificial intelligence we need to actually think about so in that sense uh, what the madam suggested is a good suggestion to in, to be brought in as part of the curriculum or as a front end approach as a separate certificate course next question madam so they want to know uh, one mrs sudha narayanan which is the best book for accounting standard there is also a similar question sir please can you recommend a good study material for indas with many practical examples oh very good now uh, i'll just share with you uh, maybe one uh, one uh, this uh, screen i will share it with you uh, yes uh, please look at this madam yes this is uh, educational material educational material on india if you just type this uh, it will actually take you to uh, ica.org and here you have uh, these many educational material for example you can take one educational material on inventory or statement of cash flows this is that educational material please look at this this is a green color book uh, and this educational material will be few pages only and this particular uh, pages will contain the please look at this it will contain a summary and it will also contain the frequently asked questions so this will be the most uh, 
ideal uh, one with respect to uh, learning your uh, indian accounting standards these books are available free of cost at icia.org educational material please type in google educational material on indian accounting standards by icai a list of books are available right from the fundamental books you can download it second please go to mca21.gov.in all the accounting standards 41 accounting standards are listed there i have given the link also in my presentation my presentation will be available in my blog 3spro.blog.spot.com in this blog you can download it immediately after the session 10 minutes later this material will be available you can go and download it along with your comments please write your comments and then download my material where all the links are available what are links i just showed you those links are available in ebs ticket you can download it. okay thank you next question so there is uh, one question from swarna lata lata how to deduct errors and mistakes in process automation oh very good uh, <laughs> now uh, i made a uh, three points maybe i'll take only one example then i will uh, try to actually uh, i have understood your question what is meant by called errors huh? what is uh, when you will do the process automation i have given the first step all the repetitive process now what is a repetitive process let me take one uh, one uh, simple question a, a tax calculation is a, a repetitive process calculating a, a, a filing of a tds return is a repetitive process now filing is uh, you can leave it one thing now taking data from your accounting verifying the data whether tds is applicable and then finding matching the right uh, data calculating the tds and arriving at the right tds amount along with the interest this is called the steps so i given four steps now taking data from the uh, trial balance second identifying the transaction which is supposed to be tds third then identifying the right rate and then multiplying it fourth totaling that and then identifying the correct interest rate and finding the total uh, liability up to this this is called the four steps in this four steps when you do the automation mistakes is bound to happen if at all you feed the concept called gigo garbage in garbage out so your data what you are taking your logic your logic of uh, taking the data proper data with respect to the algorithms uh, all this uh, possibly most probably errors can come in this is the place we need to actually fine tune our steps uh, and uh, test check with more data once you create a model test check it and that is why always a software development will take lot of time so therefore that is the place where experience the gray haired people the gray haired people is the right people experience with youngsters experience will say yes this is the place you will make a mistake please be careful so therefore it is not only knowledge that is required the experience is what is most important where the guys will actually will be able to tell okay problem will be here please look at this so therefore i am sure it's a very good question what you have put up and senior teachers senior faculty members principals uh, retired faculty members they are the treasure of knowledge uh, and i am sure uh, they will be in a good position correct position to uh, steer the youngsters with respect to this process automation next question lenta josephine has a question if tally packages included in curriculum is it useful for students as job orientation a uh, very good uh, uh, linta josephine uh, uh, i must uh, agree yes, uh, uh, tally packages uh, not only accounting packages like tally tally now has become uh, i will say a little uh, older version you have what is called a cloud based accounting we have now gone for cloud based accounting there are many softwares which is called cloud based accounting so where you will only have a, a a machine and a connectivity so you have to only enter the data data will not be stored there data will be stored somewhere and anybody can access who is having the authorization to access that data so we need to actually enhance from a tally package to the cloud based accounting and that kind of tool that kind of environment we have to actually give to the students and also form a separate certificate course also there are many cloud based accounting companies who are actually offering certificate course 
so please uh, uh, use that as a medium and swayam is also offering swayam is also offering cloud based accounting as a certificate course so please use that madam okay next question uh dr sri shankar narayanan has a question your suggestion for having more practical topics subjects uh, my 100% uh, i support that i always uh, support that uh, uh, recently many of the institutions they are actually uh, mandatorily having a second year uh, to, uh, they send the children for uh, so 15 days or 30 day practical training in uh, a chartered accountant office or a company secretary office or an advocate office or a management consulting office or a, a limited company where uh, in a particular department i think that is actually a very good one i can even recommend uh, that uh, there should be a, a perfect combination not only only pure uh, theoretical alone uh, can help uh, people have to be given more exposure to uh, the practical side of it uh, in ug courses that is why if you take a um, uh uh certain universities i need not mention all of you know that because all of you are educationist uh, there are certain education institution universities they have a case study based uh, approach only there won't be uh, the by hearting uh, today students what they do they go to the market they buy the past 10 year question paper that alone they read and they they get the they get only certificate they are only qualified they are not educated i repeat that uh, they are only qualified not educated we need to make them educated and only front end approach can we have to only push them in water and stand here and then watch muigginana illayan paakanum mulugam bodu poi thookitu vandurum avladha that is the right approach next one so i think this is on par with uh, what you have just explained can filing of gst returns be brought as a part of curriculum for students uh sudha narayanan madam your request your point is well taken very 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 good uh, point uh, but uh, i want to make one more uh, point filing of gst return is not that difficult and uh, maybe for me it will be difficult uh, for uh, sudha madam it may be difficult uh, but not for children children ipdi paniruvaanga gst r1 gst r3 b you just explain them the concept they are so good in technology they will file it just like that so filing is not the only thing beyond the filing what is reconciliation of uh, books of accounts with the gst return how to do it number 2 how the input tax credit the uh, reversal has to be calculated under rule 42 rule 43 rule 39 how to do it these are all the and how to pass entries and uh, uh, if you get a blocked credit how do you pass entries and uh, how do you do the gst audit uh, how the data will be actually reported in the gst these are all the aspects where we need to actually go beyond that of course this also should be there beyond that many things also should be there thank you madam maybe we'll take one more last question and then we'll close it Um, so I think we'll, we'll I think uh, so. There is one more question, uh, which is more beneficial to common man, GST or service tax? Please provide one or two short examples. This is for business. Okay, sir, you can just take up this question. You are interested. By ba- so, S. Bala Subramanian. So uh, maybe we'll. Uh, request madam okay, to do the closing remarks okay sir thank you so much sir for spending your time and thank you participants over to dr sumati for the word of thanks uh, thank you dr suchita for the lively q and a session and uh, thank you sir for uh, handling it in your own inimitable style i have the pleasant task of uh, proposing the word of thanks Uh, first in line i would like to thank our principal uh, dr freeda nyanarani ma'am an able administrator Uh, for encouraging and supporting us in all our activities uh, then i would like to express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to dr gk r sir uh, for having chaired this session and for having given valuable inputs for uh, curriculum development uh, sir if i have to look back i can say with conviction that uh, you handled this session very well and we could not have had a better choice of uh, speaker for this session uh, your delivery and content goes to prove the depth of your knowledge 
and the authority over the subject. Uh, as regards the key takeaways of this session, uh, your extensive coverage of uh, GST or uh, sustainable development goals or the new topic that is uh, social media influencers, all the deliberations are well taken and especially your suggestion of uh, asking the government for the teachers to come together to conduct an online course on in the AS will definitely work on it, sir. I'm sure uh, this deliberation will go a long way in uh, enhancing the employability skills of our students. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to also mention that uh, we have such a pan-India presence today. This has been possible because of your uh, pan-India appeal and profile. We thank you for all that you have done for the success of this uh, uh, session. And also thank you for allowing us to use your uh, private channel for live streaming this event. Uh, once again, thank you for all that you have done for the success of this seminar. Now, moving forward, I would like to uh, thank our uh, head of the department, Mrs. Maharasi, who has been very supportive, not just in organizing this program, but also in all the activities of our department. Uh, a big thank you to my colleagues in the Department of Commerce uh, who have come together as a team to make that uh, and ensure that they work with all uh, sincerity to make this program a real success. And even like this would not have been possible without the active participation of the audience. Uh, thanks from the bottom of the heart for uh, making it really li lively through your interaction in the chat box. Uh, we sincerely hope that all your expectations from the session was met. We continue to uh, hope to have a continued interaction with you in the future too. Um, I would be doing a gross injustice if I do not thank uh, the technical team for the support. Uh, since it was a homegrown uh, technical team, uh, we were able to have an access of 24 by 7 support for the technical assistance. It ensured that uh, the session went on without any glitch. Uh, so thanks from the bottom of my heart for all the support extended throughout. Uh, to conclude, I would like to just uh, share a small thought. Uh, if uh, we were to take a leap out of uh, the COVID books, uh, the academic fraternity coming together in forums like this to either share or learn uh, something of interest to them will definitely go down well in the books of COVID history. So on this very positive note, this is the Department of Commerce signing off with a request to the participants to fill up the feedback form that will be posted in the chat box shortly. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir.